this movie is set in India. We don't we haven't seen a lot of horror movies set in India uh, prior to this. Uh, what uh, what sort of appeal to you, Johannes, about making a telling a story like this in India? I, I think I think it's a, a it was a fresh ground to explore and and put a, a character in. What I loved is how alienating it was, and I think you really feel that throughout the movie is dropping uh, Sarah or Maria, the, the character, into this world and everything that's great about Mumbai, and Mumbai is cool, it's crazy, it's bonkers, uh, and it's so noisy and chaotic and beautiful, then when everything goes bad is it's so the worst. Sinister. It's the worst. It's noisy. It's chaotic. It's and that when you're when you've just lost a child, I just thought, oh my lord, that's going to be just a horrendous place to be. And then yeah. and then there was just so much to draw on. And you know, for a Western audience, it's just a great. It's a great new scary sort of plateau. Plateau? No, that's not the right word at all. No. No. Anyhow, plain. Plain. Sort of. Canvas, 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 canvas. Well, you're talking about a culture that's thousands of years old. And it's got this rich mythology yeah. and this rich religious background. So obviously, yeah. I think there's a lot there that can lend itself to mm -hmm. the supernatural. Well, and it's one of the things that I think is so interesting about this movie is that part of what goes wrong in the film is that Maria, as a white outsider who grew up in the United States, decides to engage with that thousand-year-old history and mysticism and completely blows it because she doesn't know what she's doing and because it's not endemic to who she is and she's sort of cherry picking from it for her own purposes without any kind of legitimate devotion and that's interesting to me you know that in a way that this is a cautionary tale against mm -hmm. like waking up one day and deciding to be buddhist you know yeah. like that these things come with a history and they come with a culture and uh and the way to do it is not to sort of pick a ritual and haul off to a temple yeah sarah when you uh go to a sort of a far-flung locale because you've worked in places like Nigeria as well. What sort of impact does it have on you as, a, as an artist to, to work in a place like India or a place like Nigeria? You know, it's, it's interesting. It, it takes me in, in two opposite directions. One is obviously the, uh, the trappings of the place that are so different. You know, the food is different or language or visually things are different. People have different, um, different ideas about modesty or language or all kinds of things like that. But then you get through that, and around the other side, you get back to that, and I'm going to quote the Muppets Take Manhattan here. Yeah. Peoples is peoples. peoples. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You get around the other side, and you realize that we all bleed red, we all breathe air, we all have beating hearts and, and families. And I've never been any place that was so different that I didn't feel feel a connection just from one human being to the other. And I find that really, it's one of the things I love most about traveling, is the more different somebody is and you can still find that thing that connects you to them as a person. I think that's amazing. Tell me the story about pronouncing Johannes' name you mentioned. <laughs> okay, so Talk about cultural communication here. Yeah, so we have a, a Brit in India yeah. with some American cast as well, um, which already is like a whole history of like imperialism yeah. and wars and stuff. Skipping that. The crew, um, many of whom did not speak English, they heard us calling him Johannes yeah. and assumed that we were calling him Your Highness. And so for a while, a bunch of the crew thought that Johannes insisted on being referred to as though he were a monarch. They literally, the which first, was amazing. Yeah, the first I knew about it was in the it was in the lunch queue, and they they literally stepped aside. Oh, go aside. ahead, Your Highness. Your Highness. And I was like, oh, thank. And then it was like, hey, are you? What, is this? Yeah. yeah. My sister now still calls me your And you're very, I mean, you, you do command <laughs> such a regal presence in yeah. your flip-flops and shorts. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. You should use that in every film from now on. Yeah, you should, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fact, film I'm, by Your Highness yeah, Roberts. Your Highness Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks very much, guys. Yeah, yeah thank pleasure. you.